So we've got the engine stand built up. It is the big hefty one as well. So it can take a bit of weight. We'll be able <laughs> <laughs> First it was chunky, now it's hefty. <laughs> it's a big boy. <laughs> Right guys, today we're no messing about, we're getting stuck into tearing the engine out of the little Hyundai i10 so Charlie can start his first ever engine rebuild. So guys, I noticed in the last video that we mentioned we were going to take the engine out of the high 10 and a few of you guys said, why are you taking the engine out, just date in situ? The reason I want to in take situ. it... Yeah, in situ. In situ? Yes. Never heard that word. Have you not? No. Right. <laughs> Today's a learning curve then. A learning curve? Yeah. It's not a learning curve, I just never heard the word. Right. So basically, the whole reason I want to take the engine out is so that Charlie's not struggling for space when he's trying to do his first ever timing chain or getting to inlet manifold bolts or anything like that. So it'll be so much easier for him to take it completely out and do it all on an engine stand. So basically, with these being very Volkswagen Audi like now, the whole front end can unbolt. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to unbolt the air conditioning pump and try and keep everything intact and just sort of move the aircon rad to the side. Hopefully it should work all right. Hopefully we won't have to go next door and ask Oracle if we can use his aircon machine. But we'll try and keep it gassed up and just try and sneak the engine out with the aircon still intact. So at the moment, we're just getting ready to take the drive shafts out. We've got it on jack stands, got the wheels off. It does need a set of discs and pads. I noticed that when we took the wheels off, so we'll get them ordered up as well. And, uh, yeah. Other than that, Charlie's already, as you've seen in the time lapse there, Charlie's already got the front bumper off, headlights off. So he's made a good start on it. I've went and picked up an engine stand off a subscriber. So we've got that to pick up. So massive thank you to Josh for lending us the engine, sta uh, engine crane. And yeah, let's stop the waffling. We'll throw some music on. We'll set up a bit of a time lapse and we'll pull this front end and drive shafts out. What do you reckon, Charlie? We'll see how long it takes us. Yeah. I want to try and get this video out tonight. So let's get the engine out tonight before we go home for dinner. Can we do it? I think so. Yeah, let's do it. Right guys, we've spent about an hour doing all the boring stuff, we've took the radiator out, we've drained the coolant. Like I said, I've managed to keep the aircon in one piece. So I've unbolted the pump, we've moved the condenser to the side, um, the front core support's off. I've undone all the gear cables, the clutch cable and all of that. Now we're at the point where this is where sort of Charlie gets hands on and all of this he's done before. This is where he starts getting involved in stuff he's never really done by himself. So, first things first, have you got your phone on you? Right, take your phone out and take some pictures of the way the wiring's routed. So, 
What you tend to find with manufacturers is the wire will either come in from one side or the other, right? If your fuse box is over here, oh yeah. see, I'll see what I've got over here, guys. Right, if your fuse box is over here, most of the wire will come out of the cab, into the fuse box, your battery's here, and then everything will wrap around the engine this way and come to a dead end here, okay? and it's vice versa. If it comes in for this side, it normally dead ends there. So what you want to try and do, Charlie, is take as much pictures as you can, so that you know where everything goes, right? But when you put it back together, you will find that the wire will, like, will lay out a similar way. It kind of falls into a pattern. So, because of the fuse box and everything's here, we'll start disconnecting for this side, and drag all the wire this way. Okay? Yeah. So, you got your pictures? Yeah. You happy with everything? Yeah. Right. So this is where you just have already undone that for you. So crack, crack on. Just start undoing stuff. Start with temp sensors, alternator connections. You'll have injector cables. You might have a knock sensor. Uh, you'll have a throttle valve position sensor. You'll have a throttle body connector. Oil pressure. There's loads of stuff to come off. Is it a bit crusty? Puff me up for it. There you go. Shall I stick the kettle on? Mm hmm. I'll do your job. I'll make the tea. Do you stop watching me. <laughs> do you want to put the kettle on? Right, I don't okay. want anything else. Do you want me to put the those pliers no. just to. Be a teenage thing. Right, so what are you mumbling? Oh, you want a cup of tea, darling? Right, tea's ready. Here you go, boss. Right, guys, Charlie's got all the wire in it, and I've got as a chain on. Time to get the engine hoist on, and again, massive thank you to Josh for lending us this. Let's get it hooked up, we'll undo the engine mounts, and then we'll get the engine out. I've got the engine mount off, gearbox mount now, pal. Just that one there. Managing to keep the aircon in one piece, and no depressurise it means we're going to save about £100 on getting a regas done as well. So that's awesome. Um, when we were taking the radiator and stuff out, it did look like the radiator's got a tiny leak. So I think I'm going to have to put a radiator in it. And there's also signs of caseal in here. So I think it's had a bit of water loss before and somebody's put caseal in it. So we're going to have to really check the head and make sure nothing's blocked. Uh, because caseal can block galleries and cause pressure build up. So we're going to have to have a real good look at this when we get it out. So. Yeah, this may just be the start of the journey for this engine. This may, there's a chance this could end up with a second hand engine at some point. Um, I hope not. I hope not as well, but I'd rather rebuild this one. But if we find that it's, uh, it's too far damaged and the caseals blocked it all up, then we'll not have much choice but to source a second hand engine. But, at least if we do have to do that, the engine's already out. So it's just a case of plotting the new one in when it comes. This is where you want one of the A3 drive ratchet uh -huh. devices, yeah. Ryobi, I've sent you multiple emails about sponsoring this channel. Please reply. I know somebody for Ryobi is watching. Uh, we've still got your uh, drive shaft catching yeah. the harness. We've still got drive shafts on. Right, there we go, engine's out. Charlie got it out. So, what we need to do now, Charlie, we're also going to keep we're also going to keep the drive shafts in place so we don't lose any gearbox oil. Um, and I just want to have a look at the clutch as well. We have got a receipt to say that the clutch was done last year, it's stamped in the service book to say it was done. 
So this will give us a chance to have a look, but let's pop the gearbox off, leave the drive shaft in, and we'll set the gearbox to the side. Come on, Charlie, bring it down. Whoa, whoa easy, bro. <laughs> nice and slowly. What, is that not it? No, nice and slowly. Right, stop there. Get your hand out of the way. Oh Get your hand out of the way. Hand back in. <laughs> Get your hand back in. So not only do we have to thank Josh for giving us this engine stand for the day, but we also need to thank uh, one of our subscribers called Paul for actually giving us an engine stand. Yeah, yeah must have seen it in the last video that I said we were going to do it on a tyre or on the workbench. The next day I got a phone call from James at Oracle saying one of your subscribers was here dropping off an engine stand. So I gave Paul a wee phone and... He said it's a gift for me and Charlie for setting up the unit and um, yeah, thank you so much, it's a very generous gift and it's, it's going to help loads, it's going to make this so much easier for you to learn on. But yeah, let's get it open and we'll get this put together, hopefully, these are what bumps onto the back, hopefully. Uh, we might need to take the clutch off, but I think we might be able to leave the flywheel on. We could use some spacers, but... Guys, let's get this built, and we'll get the engine on it. And once again, a massive thank you to Paul for dropping off this engine stand, and a massive thank you to Josh for lending us the engine crane. Uh, we really appreciate it, and it's, it's awesome. Thank you very much. Right, so we've got the engine stand built up. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, come on. Come on. Right, you ready? This needs to go <laughs> This needs to go out tonight. This needs to go out an hour. <laughs> oh, there's a gear box. Right, you ready? Get ready. Are you ready? Yes. Right. right, so we've got the engine stand built up. It is the big chunky one, which is awesome. So we'll be able to get some big engines on. Why are you laughing at it? Right, guys, so we've got the engine stand built up. It is the big hefty boy, so we'll be able to get some big engines on here at some point. You can even put V8s on here, so we'll maybe even get the Audi engine on here at some point to weld up the manifold, who knows? Yeah. Uh, we might get a wee 2G on here or an N54 or something one day, who knows? Um, but yeah, we're stuck until the morning because we haven't got any bolts long enough to mount this bracket onto the engine, so until Thomas Sanderson opens, we're stuck. But before we go, I want to give a massive thank you to Josh for giving us a loan of his engine lift and also a massive shout out to Paul for obviously hooking us up with the, the engine stand. So yeah. Massive thank you to everybody who's subscribed recently as well, because we've just went over 7,000. Next target's 10K, so don't stop subscribing. Yeah, if, if you're watching, already. we know some of you are watching without subscribing, because I look at the stats, and about 46% of you are actually subscribed. So the rest of you need to hit that sub button and get us up to 10K, because we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Let's build this community as big as we can. So like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.